Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the parotid gland. To begin with, the parotid gland is the largest of the salivary glands. It weighs about 25 grams and it is situated below the external acoustic meatus between the ramus of the mandible and the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The structure that you see right here is the parotid gland. Now let's learn about the capsule of the parotid gland through this diagram. So this diagram shows a superior view of the parotid gland. Here is the parotid gland. Here is the anterior aspect. This is the posterior aspect, the left and the right. So looking firstly at the investing layer. The investing layer of the deep cervical fascia forms a capsule for the gland. The structure that you see in green is the investing layer. Now this is supplied by the greater auricular nerve that you can see in yellow right here. Now this fascia this green color investing layer, this fascia splits into two to enclose the parotid gland. That is the superficial lamina that you see here in front and the deep lamina. The superficial lamina is attached above to the zygomatic arch as you can see right here. The deep lamina is attached to the styloid process right here. The tympanic plate right here as well as the angle and the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible. Now a portion of the deep lamina extending between the styloid process and the mandible is thickened to form the stylomandibular ligament which separates the parotid gland from the submandibular salivary gland and this ligament is pierced by the external carotid artery as you can see right here. Here is a more clear picture of the stylomandibular ligament which is a portion of the deep lamina that extends between the styloid process and the mandible and is thickened to form the stylomandibular ligament. It separates the parotid gland from the submandibular salivary gland and this ligament is pierced by the external carotid. Now, concising the important points under the introduction and the capsule of the parotid gland, the parotid gland is the largest of the salivary glands. It weighs about 25 grams. It is situated below the external acoustic meatus between the ramus of the mandible and the sternocleidomastoid. Looking at the capsule, the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia forms a capsule for the gland. It is supplied by the greater auricular nerve. The fascia splits to enclose the gland. The superficial lamina or the parotidomastoid fascia is attached above to the zygomatic arch. The deep lamina is attached to the styloid process, the tympanic plate, the angle and the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible. A portion of the deep lamina extending between the styloid process and the mandible is thickened to form the stylomandibular ligament which separates the parotid gland from the submandibular salivary gland. The ligament is pierced by the external carotid artery. Now let's learn about the external features of the parotid gland. This gland resembles a three-sided pyramid and the apex of the pyramid is directed downwards right here. This gland has four surfaces and three borders. Now this diagram will give us a more clear idea about the borders and surfaces of the parotid gland. So here as you can see there is an anterior border, a posterior border and a medial border that is on the medial side. And there are four surfaces. Here you can see the superior surface. Here in red is the superficial surface that lies between the anterior border and the posterior border. Then comes the anteromedial surface that lies between the anterior border and the medial border. And finally there is a posteromedial surface that lies between the medial border and the posterior border. Concising the important points under the external features, the gland resembles a three-sided pyramid. The apex of the pyramid is directed downwards. The gland has four surfaces that is superior, superficial, andromedial and posteromedial. And the surfaces are separated by three borders which is anterior border, posterior border and the medial or the pharyngeal border. Now let's learn about the relations of the parotid gland. Now this diagram shows the horizontal section through the parotid gland showing its relations and the structures passing through it. Now this is the anterior border. This is the posterior border. This is the superficial surface. This is the medial edge. Now the relations of the apex that is down there is the apex as we had seen earlier. So the apex overlaps the posterior belly of the digastric muscle that you can see right here. And the adjoining part of the carotid triangle. 
Now the cervical branch of the facial nerve and the two divisions of the retromandibular vein that you can see in blue right here emerge near the apex of the parotid gland. Now let's look at the relations of the surfaces of the parotid gland. Firstly, let's look at the superior surface or the base, which forms the upper end of the gland, which is small and concave. It is related to the cartilaginous part of the external acoustic meatus, the posterior surface of the temporomandibular joint, the superficial temporal vessels that you see in blue and red right here, and the auriculotemporal nerve shown in yellow. Now, the superficial surface that lies between the anterior and the posterior border is the largest of the four surfaces. It is covered with skin, superficial fascia, parotid fascia and parotid lymph node. Now, in this diagram, we can see the anteromedial surface that is between the anterior border and the median border and the posteromedial surface that is between the posterior border and the medial border. So, let's look at the relations of the anteromedial surface. So, the anteromedial surface is grooved by the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible and it is related to the meseta muscle that you see right here, the lateral surface of the temporomandibular joint, the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible and the emerging branches of the facial nerve that you see right here. Looking at the relations of the posteromedial surface, it is related to the mastoid process, the styloid process and the structures attached to them. The external carotid artery and the facial nerve enter the gland through this surface. Now let's look at the relations of the borders of the parotid gland. Firstly, the anterior border right here that separates the superficial surface from the anteromedial surface. It extends from the anterior part of the superior surface to the apex right here. Now the structures that emerge at this border, that is the anterior border, are the parotid duct as you can see right here, the terminal branches of the facial nerve and the transverse facial vessels. Looking at the posterior border, it separates the superficial surface from the posteromedial surface and it overlaps the sternocleidomastoid muscle as you can see right here. So we looked at the relations of the anterior border, the posterior border. Now let's look at the relations of the medial border. So, the medial edge or the pharyngeal border separates the anteromedial surface from the posteromedial surface and it is related to the lateral wall of the pharynx as you can see right here. Now, concising the important points under the relations of the parotid gland, the apex overlaps the posterior belly of the digastric muscle and adjoining part of the carotid triangle. The cervical branch of the facial nerve and the two divisions of the retromandibular vein emerge near the apex. Looking at the relations of the surfaces, the superior surface or the base forms the upper end of the gland which is small and concave. It is related to the cartilaginous part of the external acoustic meatus, posterior surface of the temporomandibular joint, the superficial temporal vessels and the auriculotemporal nerve. The superficial surface is the largest of the four surfaces. It is covered with skin, superficial fascia, parotid fascia and the parotid lymph nodes. The anteromedial surface is grooved by the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible and it is related to the meseta muscle, the lateral surface of the TMJ, that is the temporomandibular joint, the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible and the emerging branches of the facial nerve. The posteromedial surface is molded to the mastoid and styloid processes and the structures attached to them. So it is related to the mastoid process, the styloid process and the external carotid artery and facial nerve enter the gland through this surface, that is the posteromedial surface. Looking at the relations of the borders, the anterior border separates the superficial surface from the anteromedial surface. It extends from the anterior part of the superior surface to the apex. The structures that emerge at this border are the parotid duct, the terminal branches of the facial nerve and the transverse facial vessels. The posterior border separates the superficial surface from the posteromedial surface. It overlaps the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And finally, the medial edge or the pharyngeal border separates the anteromedial surface from the posteromedial surface and it is related to the lateral wall of the pharynx. Now, let's look at the structures within the parotid gland. Now, from the medial to lateral side, there are arteries, veins, facial nerve and the parotid lymph nodes. So, firstly, let's look at the arteries. There is the external carotid artery that enters the gland through its posteromedial surface. 
There is a maxillary artery that you see right here that leaves the gland through its anteromedial surface. And there is the superficial temporal artery that gives transverse facial artery and emerges at the anterior part of the superior surface. Here is a transverse facial artery. So it emerges in the anterior part of the superior surface. Now looking at the veins, the retromandibular vein that you see right here is formed within the gland by the union of the superficial temporal and the maxillary veins. In the lower part of the gland, the vein divides into anterior and posterior divisions which emerge close to the apex of the gland. Nextly, let's look at the facial nerve. It exits the cranial cavity through the stylomastoid foramen and enters the gland through the upper part of its postromedial surface and divides into terminal branches within the gland. Now, the branches leave the gland through its anteromedial surface and appear on the surface at the anterior border, as you can see right here. Now, the facial nerve divides into two branches, that is the temporofacial branch and the cervicofacial branch. Now, the temporofacial branch divides into temporal branch and the zygomatic branch. And the cervicofacial branch divides into buccal, marginal mandibular and the cervical branch. Superficial part and a small deep part, the two being connected by an isthmus around which the facial nerve divides, as you can see right here. Now, let's concise the important points under the structures within the parotid gland. From medial to lateral side, there are the arteries, veins, the facial nerve and the lymph nodes. So, under the arteries, there is the external carotid artery that enters the gland through its postromedial surface. There is a maxillary artery which leaves the gland through its anteromedial surface. The superficial temporal artery gives transverse facial artery and emerges at the anterior part of the superior surface. Looking at the veins, there is a retromandibular vein which is formed within the gland by the union of the superficial temporal and the maxillary veins. In the lower part of the gland, the vein divides into anterior and posterior divisions which emerge close to the apex of the gland. The facial nerve exits from the cranial cavity through the stylomastoid foramen and enters the gland through the upper part of its postromedial surface and divides into terminal branches within the gland. The branches leave the gland through its anteromedial surface and appear on the surface at the anterior border. It lies in relation to the isthmus of the gland which separates large superficial part from the small deep part of the gland. The facial nerve divides into two branches that is the temporofacial and the cervicofacial branch. The temporofacial branch divides into temporal and zygomatic branches. The cervicofacial divides into buccal, marginal, mandibular and cervical branches. Finally, there is a parotid lymph nodes. Now, the pet is fasciovenous plane. The parotid gland is composed of a large superficial and a small deep part. The two being connected by an isthmus around which the facial nerve divides. Now, moving on, let's learn about what is parotid duct, which is also called the Stenson's duct. The parotid duct is thick walled and is about 5 cm long. It emerges from the middle of the anterior border of the parotid gland. It runs forwards and slightly downwards on the masseter muscle. Now let's look at its relations. Superiorly, it is related to the accessory parotid gland, the transverse facial vessels and the upper buccal branch of the facial nerve that you see right here. Looking at its inferior relations, it is related to the lower buccal branch of the facial nerve. And at the anterior border of the masseter muscle, the parotid duct turns medially and pierces the buccal pad of fat, the buccopharyngeal fascia and the buccinator muscle. Now, since this duct has an oblique course through the buccinator muscle, the inflation of the duct is prevented during blowing. And it runs forwards and medially and opens into the vestibule of the mouth that is inside the mouth opposite the crown of the upper second molar tooth. Now, concising the important points under the parotid duct or the Stenson's duct, the parotid duct is thick walled and is about 5 cm long. It emerges from the middle of the anterior border of the gland. It runs forwards and slightly downwards on the masseter muscle. Its relations are superiorly it is related to the accessory parotid gland, the transverse facial vessels, the upper buccal branch of the facial nerve. Inferiorly it is related to the lower buccal branch of the facial nerve and at the anterior border of the masseter, the parotid duct turns medially and pierces the buccal pad of fat, the buccopharyngeal fascia and the buccinator. 
Now, since the duct has an oblique course through the buccinator, the inflation of the duct is prevented during blowing. It runs forwards medially and opens into the vestibule of the mouth opposite the crown of the upper second molar tooth. Now, let's look at the blood supply of the parotid gland. The external carotid artery and its branches that arise within the gland supply the parotid gland. And the veins drain into the external and internal jugular veins. Looking at the blood supply, the external carotid artery and its branches that arise within the gland supply the parotid gland. The veins drain into the external and internal jugular vein. Now let's look at the nerve supply of the parotid gland. It is supplied by parasympathetic nerves, sympathetic nerves and sensory nerves. Now the parasympathetic nerves are secretomotor. They reach the gland through the auriculotemporal nerve. The preganglionic fibers begin in the inferior salivatory nucleus. They pass through the glossopharyngeal nerve right here, its tympanic branch, the tympanic plexus that you see right here, and the lesser petrosal nerve and relay in the aortic ganglion right here. The postganglionic fibers pass through the auriculotemporal nerve and reach the gland. Nextly, the sympathetic nerves are vasomotor and they are derived from the plexus around the middle meningeal artery. Finally, the sensory nerves to the gland come from the auriculotemporal nerve, but the parotid fascia is innervated by the sensory fibers of the greater auricular nerve. Now, let's look at the lymphatic drainage of the parotid gland. The lymph drains first to the parotid nodes and from there to the upper deep cervical nodes. Now, let's look at what are the parotid lymph nodes. The parotid lymph nodes lie partly in the superficial fascia and partly to the deep fascia over the parotid gland, as you can see right here. They drain the temple, the side of the scalp, the lateral surface of the auricle, middle ear, parotid gland itself, the upper part of the cheek, the parts of the eyelids and the orb. Finally, looking at the clinical anatomy of the parotid gland, a parotid abscess may be caused by spread of infection from the opening of the parotid duct in the mouth cavity. A parotid abscess is best drained by horizontal incision or making many small holes known as the Hilton's method. So secondly, there is parotidectomy which is the removal of the parotid gland. And there can be occurrence of mixed parotid tumor which is also a clinical condition. Concising the important points under the nerve supply, the parotid gland is supplied by the parasympathetic, sympathetic and sensory nerves. Looking at the lymphatic drainage, the parotid lymph nodes lie partly in the superficial fascia and partly deep to the fascia over the parotid gland. They drain the temple, the side of the scalp, the lateral surface of the auricle, the external acoustic meatus, the middle ear, parotid gland, the upper part of the cheek and the part of the eyelids and orbit. And finally, looking at the clinical anatomy, there are conditions like parotid abscess, mixed parotid tumor. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of parotid gland as well as other notes of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, psychology, pathology and pharmacology, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.